In this tutorial, we're going to cover arrays, which are one of the most basic data structures in programming. So to get started, let's right-click our tutorials.basic package, select New Class, and we'll call the class Arrays. And let's create our main method by typing main, pressing Control spacebar, and hitting Enter. Alright, so an array is a data structure. So just what exactly is a data structure? Well, we know what data is. Some examples might be things like int x, int y, person john. You know, these are, are variables that store certain kinds of data that we can use. Now, a data structure is a way to organize or structure that data in a particular way, usually so that it can be accessed efficiently to solve whatever problem is at hand. Now, data structures are a huge part of programming, regardless of what language you use, and there are many different kinds of data structures out there. In fact, if you major in something like computer science, you're likely to take a full year's worth of courses just on data structures. In most cases, though, you can get by with simple structures. But the more structures you become familiar with, the larger your toolbox becomes, and you'll be better able to think about how to solve certain problems. So this tutorial is about arrays. What are arrays? Well, recall that when you declare a variable, something like int x, what you're essentially doing is setting up a box in memory that looks like this, and we're calling that box x. Now this box will either hold a value or a reference, depending on the type that the variable is. In our case, it's an int, so it's a value type. Now what an array is, is setting it up in memory so that you can have multiple of these boxes sequentially, each one capable of holding the same type. So if we wanted to create an array that could hold four ints, it might look something like this, where we'd get this box, and the box would then be subdivided into four segments. And each one of these boxes can hold an int value. So for example, we could put five in the first box, three in the second box, 0 in the third box, and 1 in the fourth box. And now we can use the array data structure to access this data instead of having to refer to each element with a different variable name. So that's the concept. Now let's look at how it looks in code. So when we say int x, we are creating that one box in memory that can store one int value. And now we want to create an array that can store those four int values. Well, it works in a similar way. We have to declare the array and then initialize the array. So how do we declare an array? We start with the type of data that we want our array to contain. In our case, it's int. And now we need to tell Java that we're declaring an array of ints, not just a single int. And the way you do that is with square brackets. And now we can give our array a name. So we could say my array, and then semicolon. So at this point, we've declared our array, but we haven't actually created those four boxes in memory yet. The way we do that is we have to initialize the array. And how we initialize an array looks like my array equals new int square brackets. And now inside of the square brackets, we put the number of items we want our array to be able to hold. In our case, it is four, and then a semicolon at the end. So now we've created those four boxes in memory, and we can put values in them. Before we get to that, though, let's comment our code. On this line, we are declaring an array that will store ints. On this next line, we are initializing our array to be capable of holding four ints. So now, how do we assign values to those boxes? Well, before, when we have just one variable, like our int x, we could say x equals 5. This time, though, we have an array. So let's say we want the first element in the array to be 5. How would we do that? Well, we would type my array, square brackets, and now we want to access the first element in the array. Now this could throw people off sometimes, because with arrays you start counting from 0 which is very common in computer science. So we would say my array, the zeroth element, equals 5. And now that first box in our array will hold a 5. 
And it's the same sort of thing for the other boxes in the array. You would say my array 1 equals 3. My array 2 equals 0. And my array 3 equals 1. And now if we go back to our picture, we can see that our zeroth element is 5, our first element is 3, our second element is 0, and our third element is 1 for a total of four boxes. And since all these boxes just hold ints, we could actually assign my array 0 the value of x instead of 5 directly. So now we know how to assign values, but what if we just want to get a value out of it? Well, it's the same sort of thing. We could do a syso for a system out. And now let's say we want to know what's in my array 2. And if we run the application, we'll see that 0 is printed out. And we could change that and see what's at array index 0 and print that out. And we'll see that 5 is printed out. And that's what we'd expect because we assigned the value of x, which is 5, to my array at index 0. Now, arrays usually work hand in hand with for loops. In fact, it's so common that if you were to type the word for and then press control spacebar, the first thing that pops up is this for iterate over array. If we select that, it will auto complete for us. And if we look at what it's doing, we can see for int i equals 0. So it's declaring an int i variable as our counter. It's saying while that counter is less than the length of my array, increment the counter. And then we'll do something in here for every element in the array. So we could print out every element by cutting our system out and pasting it inside the for loop. And instead of printing out my array 0, we would print out my array i. And now if we run the program, we'll see that 5, 3, 0, and 1 are printed out. So this is called iterating over an array. Now there is a somewhat cleaner way to do this, and that is by using a new version of the for loop, which was created to iterate over a collection, and an array just happens to be a collection. So the way the new for loop works is we would say for, and we can say int number, and then a colon, and then my array, and then braces. And the way to read this is, for every number in my array, do something and it's going to do the exact same thing as this for loop. The only difference is that each time the loop iterates, we can get the value at that index in the array by using the number variable. So, we could do systemout.println, and instead of my array i, we would simply say number. And now if we comment out this other code and run the application, we'll see that once again, 5301 is printed out. Now I'll show you what happens with a common mistake when you begin working with arrays. And that is, if you try to assign a value outside the range of the array, or if you try to get a value from outside the range of the array. For example, if I were to say my array 4 equals 0, and run the application, we'll see this in the console. Exception in thread main java.lang.arrayIndexOutOfBounds exception 4. This is really the only data you have to be concerned with. It's telling you that the array index is out of bounds, and the index at which it's out of bounds is 4. And that makes sense because our array is of length 4, and it starts counting from 0. But until you get used to the 0 count thing, you might end up seeing that array index out of bounds exception. Let's say instead of 4 elements, just to show you the power of arrays, we want to store 50,000 elements. We'll change our comment to 50,000. Now it wouldn't make much sense to store values into that array using this type of approach. Instead, we're going to use a for loop. So we could say for int counter equals 0, counter is less than 50,000, counter plus plus, my array at counter equals counter. So when this runs, our array is essentially going to contain the values 0 through 49,999. 
and then our for loop down here will print out all the values in the array. Now we can comment out this chunk of code by typing forward slash star, and then at the end, where we don't want it commented anymore, we can type star forward slash, and let's run it. 499,999. And our console is pretty full with numbers. And let's do one more quick example. Let's comment out our array initialization here, and we're going to initialize it in a different way. Now we'll say my array equals new int. And now, instead of putting a number in those brackets, we can put curly braces and a semicolon, and inside of those curly braces, we can just put a list of numbers. And Java will then automatically initialize the array to contain those elements. So we could put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now, let's comment out our for loop here. And now if we just print it out, it should print out 1 through 10. And you can see that it does. So now you should have an idea of how to create arrays and how to use them. And hopefully you can see that they are very powerful. And you can create arrays to store any type of data. We can store ints, or we could even declare an array to store person objects and call it people. And we could initialize that array to store as many people as we'd like, and then store person objects into that array. And one last thing I should mention is that an array is actually an object. So if we were to type my array dot, we'll see a list of methods we can call on that object. Now an array is a pretty lightweight object, there isn't much you can do with it, but as you noticed in our for loop, we can get the length of the array and use that however we might need. Thanks for watching.